Hello everyone, and welcome to Slice, Print, Roleplay. In this video, I'm going to teach you everything you need to know to get started with your FDM 3D printer. Alright, let's get to it. So first off, I want to be clear that this video is meant to be followed after your printer has been assembled and set up. There are dozens of printers on the market right now, and what's required to set up one printer might be very different than what's required for another. So make sure you check the manual that came with your printer to figure out exactly what's needed for assembly and setup. So the first thing we'll want to do is locate the micro SD card that came with your printer. And just a quick note, the majority of printer models do use a micro SD card. However, some newer models have started using full size USB drives. And then once you have that located, go ahead and plug that into your printer. Next, we're going to look and see if the manufacturer provided you with a pre-sliced test file. If you find one, I'd recommend you go ahead and print it. These files are normally set up by the manufacturer for your specific model of printer. And they're a great place to start your 3D printing journey because they allow you to check and make sure that your printer has been set up correctly and that it's going to function correctly. And if you don't find a test file, then obviously go ahead and skip that step. And if you do find that your printer isn't functioning correctly, or if you hit some kind of an issue when you're trying to print that file, then my Facebook group and my Discord channel are really great resources to use whenever you need help figuring out an issue like that. Next, when you want to start printing your own files, you'll need to get something called a slicer. A slicer is a program that will allow you to take a 3D file and set it up for printing on your exact model of printer. Now there are quite a few different slicing programs out there, but I do recommend starting with Ultimaker Cura as it's one of the most popular and it's what I'll be using in this video. And if you need help setting your printer up in Cura, you can find a video covering that process listed in the description down below. Just real quick, I want to give a shout out to JJack and Tyler. Thank you so much for joining my Patreon. Seriously, your support makes a huge difference for the equipment I'm able to get, the tests I'm able to run, and all around just helps improve the channel in so many different ways. Thank you so much. I really, really appreciate it. And then once you have Cura installed and your printer selected, it should look something like this. And what you're seeing here is a representation for the build volume of your 3D printer. Now, it can be really easy to lose your bearings in here, especially when you start moving the viewpoint around. So one thing that they do that's really helpful is they give you these three lines here. Green represents your y-axis, so front to back. Red represents your x-axis, so side to side. And blue represents the z-axis, which is up and down, top to bottom. So these three lines are a nice quick reference to help you understand how you're viewing your printer and how you're orienting your model on your build plate. Now to continue with this tutorial, we're going to have to download a 3D file. Now if you're not sure where to get files for 3D printing, I have a couple of different websites listed in the description of this video. Now one thing that I do strongly recommend when you're first starting out is that you stick with files that don't require supports. And to find those files, all you have to do is type supportless into the search bar of whatever site you're using. And the reason that I recommend printing supportless models is because adding supports to a file can be a little bit confusing and oftentimes overwhelming for someone who is just starting out. So this way you can focus on the basics and as you gain experience and start moving up that difficulty curve, then you can start working on printing models that require supports. And as soon as you're ready to print those kinds of files, I do have a tutorial explaining how to use supports and what settings to use and all of that kind of information, which of course you can find linked down below. Now I'm going to download this Sorcerer model from EC3D Design because it's supportless, it's free, and I'm honestly really excited to print it. One thing that's worth noting, whenever you download these files, they will typically come in what's called a zip folder, which you can see here. I'm going to open it just like a normal folder, but then I'm going to grab the folder inside and just copy it over my desktop. And then that will allow us to open this up. Oh, we got another folder inside. And then in here, this is where we can just drag these over and drop them onto our slicer. So let's do that now. So now all I'm going to do is click and drag the file that I want and drop it into my slicer. And then once it loads, we can start getting it ready for printing. And now that we have a model in the slicer, let's talk about how to navigate your slicer and some of the features you'll find. First, if you hover over a model and hit your left mouse button, that's going to highlight the model. You can see how it's now highlighted with this blue outline. Next, if you scroll in and out on your mouse wheel, it will zoom in and out. Next, if you click and hold on your right mouse button, you can move around the model, up above it, or down below it. Now when we highlight a model, you can see that we get these three arrows, and the arrows correspond with the three lines that we have as a reference over here, and they work in the same way. So if you click and hold on one of these arrows, you can move the model in that direction. So this is moving on the Y, this is moving on the X, and now the Z is really important. If we move the model up above the build plate, it'll snap back in place, no harm done. If you move the model below the build plate, it actually is telling the slicer that you want to cut off whatever is below the build plate. And this can be useful in some situations, like for example, if I wanted to remove the base off this model and I wanted to do it really quickly, I would simply just keep moving this down until eventually 
that turned blue showing that it was down below the build plate now whenever i slice this model everything that isn't that blue color will print so i've completely removed the base off this model so you can see how in some situations this is really helpful but if you're not paying attention this can also be really frustrating so just make sure that your model is up above the build plate so that everything will print the way that you want it to next is going to be scale you can use this to make the model bigger or smaller and you can do that in two ways First, as long as uniform scaling is selected, you can change any of these values. So here I'm gonna add 50 instead of 100, then I'm gonna hit enter, and you can see that we've scaled the model down by half. Next, again, as long as uniform scaling is selected, you can grab any one of these points and move it away from the model to make it bigger, or towards the model to make it smaller. Now, if uniform scaling is not selected, when you change any of these values or grab only one of these points, what you'll find is that the model only changes in that direction. Which again, this can be useful in some situations, but if you're not careful, it obviously can really mess things up. So to undo all of this, I'm just going to hold control and hit Z until I get back to where I want to be. There we go. Next is going to be rotate, and this is going to work the same way. We can grab any one of these arrows and start to move the model around. And this can be really useful if the model comes in at a strange orientation or if there's a different orientation you want to put it in to maybe reduce supports or something like that. And the last one we're going to talk about is mirror and this is exactly what it sounds like you can use any of these arrows to uh, change the file so that it has a mirror image of what it was before so for example uh, if i wanted to change the staff from his left hand to his right hand i can do that with these red arrows here and now i find this really useful whenever i'm going to print two of the same file um, i'll do this so that i have uh, two that are similar but don't look exactly the same that way i can kind of keep track of them on my table all right, and now if we go to the top of the screen, on the far left here is where you'll select a different printer if you have more than one. In the middle tab is where you will select a different type of filament or a different size nozzle. Now it's pretty common that most printers come equipped with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle, so you shouldn't have to change this. And you shouldn't have to change the material unless you're printing with something other than PLA, but since PLA is the easiest filament to print with, I do recommend starting with that. Now this final tab here on the right is arguably the most important area because it's where you'll adjust your print settings. From here, I like to go down to custom view because I like this menu layout a bit more. And for now, to keep things as easy as possible, the only change we're gonna make is selecting a different profile depending on what you're printing. And basically, you can think of these profiles as the smaller the number, the higher the detail, but the longer the print time. So for something small like this mini that has really fine details, I do wanna pick this fine profile here. But if I was printing something larger, like playable terrain or a really large monster, I would probably use something like 1.5 or 2 because that's going to give you less detail but print a lot faster, and at that larger size you're not really going to notice that drop in detail. So we're going to go ahead and select that fine profile, close out of this, and hit slice. Now down here in this window you can see we have some estimates for this print. Based off the profile that I selected, it's going to take 1 hour and 2 minutes to print and use 4 grams of filament. And an important note about these is that they are estimates and they are known to be a bit off, so take them with a grain of salt. So the final thing I want to show you here in the slicer is that once a model is sliced and you see this information down here, you can go up to preview up here in the middle. And this shows you a pretty detailed preview of how your model is going to be printed based off the settings that you've selected. And just a quick note, if you go to preview and you find that there are supports on your model, then we can go ahead and turn those off by going back to this menu here, going down to where it says support, dropping this down, and then unchecking the box where it says generate support. Then you'll have to slice your model again, and now you won't have supports. And if you want to change what information is presented to you in the preview, you can go up to where it says color scheme, and then change this drop down here to something like line type, or speed, and this information is all displayed here with pretty good accuracy. But what I really like to do is go over to the layer view here, and grab this slider and move it up and down. This is going to show you how the model is printed layer by layer, and I think it's really fascinating to watch, but it can also be really helpful to see if there's going to be a problem with the way your model is going to be printed based off the uh, settings that you're using or the orientation that it's in. One really important practice that I recommend for every model you slice, at least until you have a really good feel for what you're doing, is going into this preview, going into your layer view, and going down to that very first layer. And we're looking at this because the first layer is the most important layer. If this doesn't have a good attachment, then your model's just not going to print. All right, so now we've got the model sliced and ready to go. Now we have to get it onto our printer. And to do that, you'll need one of these adapters that lets you plug a micro SD card into a USB port on your computer. And you should have an adapter like this because typically they do come with a printer. 
And if you're lucky enough that your printer has a USB port, then you'll just need a USB drive. And then once you have that plugged into your computer, I like to change this to save to disk. And the reason that I do that is because it allows me to select the correct drive. And it also allows you to change the name of your file when you save it. So I'm going to change this one and make it a little shorter. Another tip, always make your titles as short as you can, because some printers will actually have an issue where if it exceeds a certain character limit, then the printer can't actually read the file. So try to keep these as short as you can, just for safety's sake. Then once you have your file saved on there, take it back over to your printer, plug it in and print it. And that's it. You should now know everything you need to get started with your FDM 3D printer. And of course, if you have any questions, you can post them down below or join my Facebook group or Discord channel. And if you found this video helpful, please like and subscribe. It helps the channel grow and I really do appreciate it. And lastly, if you like the work that I'm doing here and you want to support my channel, please consider joining my Patreon. Doing so gets you access to some pretty cool rewards, including one-on-one -on -one 3D printing support. This is a great option if you're troubleshooting an issue and you need some help, or if you just have a lot of questions. Alright, thanks for watching, now let's go print something.